Welcome to the last edition of Gauge Theory Virtual for this term. Happy to have Jason and Courtney take away. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation to speak in this seminar. So um, today I'm going to talk about stability uh, in the context of class of singularities or neck pinches in Lagrangian mean curvature flow. And as you can see, it takes me quite a long time to write down Lagrangian mean curvature flow. And I have to say it lots of times. So I'm going to immediately and from now on abbreviate it to LMCF, just the initials of the words. And before I begin, I should say that the work I'm talking about is joint with Felix Schulze and Gabor. Zekalahidi. Accents in the right place. Yes, I have. Very good. So um, you can probably guess this is not a talk on gauge theory, but it's very much inspired by gauge theory. I'll try to explain um, where that inspiration comes from. Um, and as a consequence, because of a different sort of style of the usual topic, do feel free to ask me questions uh, if you have them along the way. All right, so I should start by telling you what uh, all of these things are. So what is just mean curvature flow? So without the L. So the mean curvature flow is just the negative gradient flow of volume. The meaning, I take a submanifold in a Riemannian manifold, say it's compact, and then I say, what is the fastest way to decrease the volume of the submanifold? And the answer will be the mean curvature flow. So let's suppose that we have a one parameter family of submanifolds, let's call them LT, suggestively, because they're going to be Lagrangian in a bit. And what does it mean for them to satisfy the mean curvature flow? Well, that's got to be a statement of how they vary in time. So T is the, the time parameter. And the answer is it's equal to H, prefer H of LT, which is the mean curvature of the submanifold LT at each given time. So that's the fastest way to decrease the volume. Now, this is a purely Riemannian statement that I've made. Right? I've just used Riemannian geometry. So at the moment, it's what's this got anything to do with Lagrangians? Well, there's an important fact. Let's say a theorem, perhaps. Do Smotchik, which says the following, that suppose you do the mean curvature flow not just in any Riemannian manifold, but in one which is Kähler, the holonomy of the metric is contained in the unitary group, and it's Einstein. So the Ricci curvature is a multiple of the metric. If you put those two conditions together, then this preserves the Lagrangian condition. And so, what do you get? You get Lagrangian mean curvature flow. So it's exactly the same equation. I don't change the equation at all. It's the same one, but I just have a Lagrangian initial condition in a Kähler-Einstein manifold, and then that initial Lagrangian condition is preserved. So it becomes a flow. And it's surprising on first sight to see this, to see that Lagrangians have anything to do with the gradient flow for volume. 
but you can check it's a consequence of the gauss kadatsi equations in Kähler-Einstein manifolds, which is why this is true. And you have to do some analysis as well to prove it's true, but morally, that's, that's the reason. Okay. All right. So now we know what Lagrangian mean Kircher flow is. In particular, you can do Lagrangian mean Kircher flow in a Calabi Yau manifold. So for most of this talk, the Calabi Yau in question that you can think about is just complex Euclidean space. Okay. So if you if you don't like Calabi Yau, then just think about CN. But more generally, they're, they're examples of Kähler manifolds which have a Ricci flat metric, so in particular Einstein. So if you're in a Calabi Yau manifold, then the mean curvature takes a nice form. So this is in, in Calabi Yau. And the L's are Lagrangian now. Then the mean curvature can be written in a very nice way. It can be written as J, so J here is the complex structure. times the gradient of a function theta. And this function theta is called the Lagrangian angle. All right. This is very surprising fact, right? Because the mean curvature, it's a vector, right? It's not a number, it's a vector. It's a vector taking values in the normal bundle to the submanifold. The submanifold is half the dimension. So it's a vector of exactly the same you know, dimension as the, the submanifold. And yet it can be expressed in terms of a scalar function. Right? That's what this is saying. Now, you can say even more than this, because what does it say are the critical points? In the case when you have a calabi manifold, well, it's when the angle is constant. That, that's what it's saying, right? That's theta equals constant. But that's the same thing as what's called special Lagrangian. So if you've heard the name special Lagrangian before, one way to say it is to say that this angle is constant. That's what special Lagrangian means. So it's almost the same as saying minimal Lagrangian. It's not quite the same because the angle can just be locally constant, right? It could take different values on different connected components, but if it were the same constant everywhere, then it would be special Lagrangian. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, one, because special Lagrangians are interesting. You may have heard of them before, but also because special Lagrangians have a great property that they're not just critical points for volume, they're volume minimizing. So that means if you're in a Calabi R manifold and doing Lagrangian mean curvature flow, you're looking at a negative gradient flow whose only critical points are absolute minima. That's a very good situation to be studying gradient flows. And indeed, this is very similar to what happens if you're looking at um, the Yang Mills flow, you're looking at connections, Hermitian connections on holomorphic bundles, you can set things up so that the Hermitian Yang Mills connections are the absolute minimizers, the only critical points. And in fact, that is not just, you know, what, um, that's not just, you know, an observation, it's predicted by mirror symmetry, which I will say absolutely nothing about, but mirror symmetry is supposed to relate the study of Lagrangians on one calabi and special Lagrangians and the category which is associated to those and holomorphic bundles or coherent sheaves and hermitian yang mills connections on the mirror calabi -Yau. And so what this does, is it suggests
that. The Lagrangian mean curvature flow can lead to a decomposition. So what am I thinking about here? So if I had a holomorphic bundle, I could think about the harder Narasimhan filtration. Right? That's what I'm thinking about, right? A way to write your, break up your bundle into a sequence of, of bundles where the successive quotients are stable. That's the sort of thing I want to do. Decomposition of perhaps not all Lagrangians, but certain Lagrangians. That's the hope, okay? This is not, this is not a theorem or anything like that. This is just a, an expert. It is what you might hope if you believe in mirror symmetry and all these things. And then the question is, how does it know? How does the flow know about the decomposition? How does it detect it? Well, and then this is detected through, well, what happens in the Yang-Mills flow? Well, if you have a stable bundle, then there's no singularity at all for the flow, right? Even at infinite time, there's nothing, right? There's no singularities. So what you'd hope is that this decomposition is detected through singularities. And that's what this neck pinch thing is. This neck pinch is an example of such a singularity. Okay, so that's the, the setup. Are there questions for me? Okay. So the question then is what singularities can occur? But this is too, I mean, if you've ever thought about sort of singularities and flows, this is, this is too much to ask, perhaps generically. In other words, maybe there's a, there's a huge zoo of singularities out there, but most of the time you can get rid of, you know, most of them right, somehow. And there should only be a few left that uh, are the ones you really care about. So this generically is not defined. I'm not, and I'm not going to define it because it doesn't have a definition, but you can imagine what it might mean. What, what you'd hope the definition would be, it would be something like, these are the singularities that you can't perturb away by choosing your initial condition in a clever way. Generic way, it seems easier. And so I'm now going to answer this by saying um, a little bit more about the, about the setup. So if you have a Lagrangian, let's call it L0, such that LMCF converges to a special Lagrangian, could converge, could converge to a special Lagrangian, then you can look at this function. Now I said it was a function, right? But actually when I defined it, I only defined the gradient of the function. In fact, the function is not single valued in general. It's a multi-valued function in general. But if it's gonna to converge to a special Lagrangian, it's supposed to converge to a constant. So the property of being single valued is something that's preserved along the flow. So it can't start multi-valued and become single-valued. So what this says is, implies that L0 must have, I look at the class of the derivative, the exterior derivative of, of the function is zero in, in H1. And this property is called zero Maslow. I'm not going to use it again, but just, just in case you're interested. This thing is the Maslow class up to normalizations. We're asking it to be zero. 
okay, so if you're going to study Lagrangian mean curvature flow and you want to do this decomposition stuff in particular, you want to find it to a special Lagrangian, you need zero Maslow. But what this tells you is that the singularities are what is known as type two. And what that means is not that important to us, except that it's not the most obvious singularity you can think of. What's the most obvious singularity you can think of in a geometric flow? Say, mean curvature flow, you take a sphere and it shrinks down to a point. Or you take a cylinder and it pinches like that. It looks exactly the same and self similarly shrinks. What this type two means is it can't be like that. You can't have a shrinking sphere, shrinking cylinder in the most obvious way. Okay? So these are not modeled not modeled by self shrinks, which is just a statement that it's a flow where it just looks exactly the same at every time slice, it's just a smaller version of itself. That's what this type two means. So that looks like bad news to us because, you know. So, sorry, can I interrupt? Please. Uh, so, so is this sort of like general type, like, you know, there were some simple things and then this type two just is everything else? Is that the, That's is right. That, it's okay. Exactly okay. So, right. so you're not going to tell us, uh, maybe you'll tell us some more about it or or just just say not the simplest thing. That, that's all we're supposed to keep in mind. Yeah, that's it. Because that's, I mean, it's, it's a kind of stupid name. It's just, yeah, as you said, it's type one is all the simple stuff and type two is everything else. Okay, that's fine. I, that's the definition. It's not the only field where that's been done, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there is such a thing. Well, anyway, yeah. But in terms of singularities, there's only at finite time, there's only two types. <laughs> type one is simple and type two is everything else. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, okay. So, uh, right. Thanks. Yeah. Keep the questions coming, please. Okay. So it's not modeled by a self shrink. Yeah. Please. So the question was, does which the this condition? So, so, so the the question was, do you have an a priori lower, lower bound on the volume? Well, yes, because you know what. So the 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 volume of a special Lagrangian in the class is something topologically determined. Right? It's just determined by the integral of a certain. It's just the pairing of that class with a certain closed form on the manifold. But but you don't. But you don't know that you have a lower bound for the volume of anything in the, in the class. You know that any Lagrangian has to have larger volume than the than the special Lagrangian in the class. But um, that's just topological. Yeah. So there's a topological lower bound right from the off. Yeah. So it can't just go to a point if there's a special Lagrangian around. But you don't know there is one. But if there were one, then you'd have that lower bound. Does that make sense? Yes, 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 yes. No, no, but no, no, but this is all I'm just using compact. I mean, it, yeah, sure. Yeah. So you don't want to think about CN, but when you think about compact things, but uh, just CN is, is just useful for what I'm going to do, because that's where because all of the analysis of singularities will be local. So you may as well pretend that everything's happening in CN. More, more questions? Okay, so then, so then this question is, well, what is the generic singularity? The most obvious thing I could think of is a shrinking sphere or a shrinking cylinder or something like that. That's the most obvious thing. What, what is the next most obvious thing if I'm forced into this situation? Joyce conjectures that um, a generic Singularity in this setting is given by what he calls a neck pinch. So the picture is 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 like this. So let's su suppose I really do this for surfaces. So suppose I have some Lagrangian surface flowing. Uh, 
here I've just got two, looks like the connect sub of two Lagrangian spheres. And then I have some region here, which is going to pinch off. So then picture at some later time is that pinches off. And so this region is topologically a cylinder, right? This is S1 times R topologically, but what is the model geometry that's happening there? Because it's not just that the circle shrinks down right, everywhere. That's not, that's not what's happening. So what is the, the model geometry? So the model neck is a Lagrangian cylinder. Oh, in fact, I'll just jump right to it. It's a special Lagrangian cylinder. So it's called a Lawler neck. Which is asymptotic to a transverse pair of plates. In space. Okay. So that's the model of what you're seeing. So that's very different because the model then doesn't move. The model is a critical point. This is very different from the shrinking cylinder or shrinking sphere, where the model is obviously forming a singularity. Here, if you just look at the model, you zoom in, you see something that doesn't move at all. So it's only at a next level higher that you actually see. So if you zoom in even more and sort of do more, more refined analysis, you see that actually those Lawlin X, those cylinders are moving in the family in a non-trivial way so that the circle in the middle pinches off. That's what happens. So you can imagine it like a family of hyperbole where it's getting more and more like this until eventually it looks like that. That's what you can imagine is happening. So there's, a, there's just the one circle that pinches off right? rather than in the cylinder where all of them do. As I said, the model is actually not moving at all. Okay, so um, so what what so what this transverse pair of planes that you see? So the transverse pair of planes is so they're here, right? There there are the planes that they're, they're like here and here. So what those pair of planes should be? So the pair of planes. Should be. We don't know, but should be what's called the tangent flow. Well, let me let me be very careful now. A tangent flow. Okay, so why was I hesitant about putting the here? Because there's nothing that tells you that the tangent flow or a tangent flow is unique. The tangent flow is like the tangent space. Right? I, I zoom in more and more to this point and take the first order behavior of the flow. There, okay? That's just like the tangent space. What I get is something when I do that. And, but the thing is that there's lots of different ways in which I could rescale around that point. There are many, many different sequences that I could take as I zoom in. And along different sequences, I could see different things. And so the tangent flow is not necessarily unique. It could, it could move around. It could be that this sort of wobbles between one pair of planes and another pair of planes. Like that, like that right? just wobble around like that. But the conjecture is that it doesn't do that. It doesn't. There is, 
There is one, which is the one that this Lawler neck is asymptotic to. That's the part of the conjecture. And so what um, I want to, so then the, the question is, can we recognize and resolve that pinches and relate them to stability. And the answer is the main result is yes, if the dimension of the Lagrangians that we're thinking about is two. So if we were looking at Lagrangian mean curvature flow of surfaces, then we can do this. So we can detect when a neck pinch singularity is forming, we know how to go past it, and we can relate it to the notion of stability for Lagrangians. That's what I want to spend the rest of the time talking about. Okay, any questions? Right. Okay, so um, I should say from the beginning, just to make some remarks. So the first one is that neck pinches do occur. So we, we observe them in the wild, as it were. I mean, we know that there are some Lagrangian mean curvature flows for which this really does happen. Okay, they, they do actually fall. And that's work of combining work of Andre Deves and Albert Wood. They work together, then you actually do see these neck pinch singularities. And I should also make the remark that what this, I haven't defined what stability means yet. So let me just say what, roughly what it's going to be, at least say what it is. So that's Thomas and Yao conjecture that there is a notion of stability such that if L0 is stable, the initial Lagrangian is stable, then the Lagrangian mean curvature flow exists for all time and converges to a special Lagrangian. So this should be compared with the Yang-Mills analogy that I was making uh, a few minutes ago. And the condition that they write down, which I will explain, but you have to wait a little bit, the condition they write down is very much modeled on what you would expect from the yang mill setting. They're trying to rule out the possibility of the Lagrangian breaking up into smaller pieces where kind of the angle goes down. That's the, like the slope stability you might imagine. Okay, so, um, let me say like uh, now a little bit more precisely what the statement is as follows. So let me just say that uh, first of all, that, so this is an observation.
So suppose that you're, we're in, we're in dimension two, so the dimension of the initial Lagrangian is two, then any tangent flow, so remember that this is just the first order behavior of the Lagrangian mean curvature flow at a singular time. Okay? It's just the model of what's happening at a singular time. Then any tangent flow is a union of planes. Okay? So we know that any tangent flow is just a union of planes. That's nice. That's very simple. Okay. And it can't be one plane because then there's no singularity at all. So the next simplest thing is that it's two planes. And then there are three possibilities. Either they're the same plane, or they're planes that meet at one point, or they're planes that meet along a line. And you'd expect that the generic one is when they meet at a point. If you pick two planes, generically they should meet at a point. So let's suppose that, um, suppose, tangent flow is two planes meeting transversely C2, call them P1 and P2. Then if I impose another condition, so if, ah, so I just need to define one more thing. So let's recall that on C2, well, on Cn more generally, the symplectic form, omega, which is just dx1 wedge dy1 plus dx2 wedge dy2, is d of some form. It's exact. Okay. Because there's no cohomology in C2. It's exact. It's d of something. And then what you can say is suppose that L0 is an exact Lagrangian. Exact means that if I look at this one form, right? So lambda is a one form because d of it is a two form. This one form is a closed one form on a Lagrangian because Lagrangian means that this two form vanishes. Okay, so this is a closed one form on something. So it makes sense to ask for it to be d of something, right? To be exact. And that's what it means to be an exact Lagrangian. Okay. And let's suppose. If this is true, then um, the, uh, the two planes, the P1, P2, have the same Lagrangian angle. Okay. This, is, uh, this is a crucial, crucial theorem, again, due to so if you impose this extra condition, then you get that the um, planes have to have the same angle. So this is related to the comment that I made that you see critical points are things which have locally constant angle, right? If I just took two Lagrangian planes, then their union is always minimal, right? Because a plane is minimal. But of course, some of them are better than others, because if they have the same angle, then there are a special Lagrangian pair of planes, and then I know there's some Lawlinek asymptotic to them, right? That won't happen if they have different angles. It's impossible. So it's very important that I know that the, the planes will each have the same angle. 
And so now let me tell you what the um, what the what the theorem is. So let L0 be a graded, so that what this means is, i.e., um, we can choose beta L0 to R, Lagrangian angle. can and do those are graded means so it's it's slightly more than zero maslov zero maslov says there is some lagrangian angle that i can choose and graded means i've made a choice like orientable and oriented so i i choose this lagrangian angle and exact in c2 so there's a there's a stronger version of this where you do everything in a compact calabial, but let me not say it. But it will be related in C2. And suppose LT, the branch of mean curvature flow, starting at L0. As a finite time singularity. such that one tangent flow is a pair of transverse planes. And noting that, of course, they have to have the same angle, right, by the thing that I said over there. I don't have to add that hypothesis, but I know they, ha they have to, because otherwise there's no singularity at all. So they have to have the same angle. And then the statement is that, let's say a finite time singularity at some point XT capital T. All right, then I know in fact that all tangent flows Are P1 union P2 and LT has a neck pinch at XT. So it really does what you expect. So as soon as you see one tangent flow, which is a pair of planes that's transverse, then all of the tangent flows are the same, and it's that neck pinch model that I drew. That's what has to happen. Okay. All right. You also know that when it converges to this LT, it's a, um, this LT is actually C1 immersed. And there exists, so this is T and zero up to T. And there exists a graded LMCF LT, which extends you past the singular time, which is smooth away from that singular time. So why, why did I highlight that uh, graded thing? So just need to think about curves in the plane.
So suppose that I draw a figure eight curve in the plane, okay, like this. This is graded, this thing, because at each point I can, I can choose a single valued function right, that defines the, the angle at every point. So this is graded. Yeah, you agree? So what's going to happen if I try to shorten the length of this curve as quickly as possible? It's going to pinch off that bit. Right? It's much shorter to get rid of that loop. So I'll get a singular time where it looks like this. And it is indeed a C1 immersed curve. But you see, I can continue the flow, but not grade it anymore. Now I can't choose my single valued function anymore. Now, not graded. Right? Can't continue. So this is not what's happening in this case, right? This is not what's happening. But this is what you could imagine would be some way to extend the Lagrangian mean coacher flow that would be bad because we always want to keep control of this Lagrangian angle the whole time along the flow. Is it clear, the picture? So this is, what, this is what's not happening for us, right? This is not, this is not our extension. Not our extension of the flow. Okay. So this is, this is the first thing. Can we recognize and resolve the neck pinch circularity? So we can recognize them. We just need to see one tangent flow and that's it. And then we can resolve them in this way. We can flow past and keep it graded. Now is the question of stability. So this is where I have to explain what is Thomas Yao stability. Explain that. So Thomas Yale's stability says the same. So it says, says the following. So to do that, let me just recall one thing. Recall that, well, some people recall, maybe not. So L is a Lagrangian. L is what's called almost calibrated. If it is graded such that if I look at the variation of, uh, oops, put this exactly the wrong way around. If I look at the variation, total variation of the, of the angle, it's smaller than pi, pi minus epsilon, some epsilon at least. So that's not true for, for this one. Right? This one goes past pi, like that would go past pi. So for some, to have something almost calibrated, you'd have to have you know, a picture like this. This would be an almost calibrated curve, a non-compact curve. I have to draw it on the flow. Okay. All right, so then what does it mean to be stable? So L is stable. If L is almost calibrated, and whenever you can write L as a Lagrangian connect sum up to Hamiltonian isotopy. So I'm saying lots of fancy things, but all you want to say is you can break it up into two. Lagrangian pieces in a way that's compatible with the Lagrangian business, right? So I write it as a Lagrangian connect sum in this way. Whenever you do this, then one of the following two things are true. Then, then, uh, then this or this happens. So we can look at the, um, so let's do this in, uh, in, in uh, C2, so in, in a Calabiao, there exists a holomorphic volume form, omega. 
And this holomorphic volume form has the property that it encodes the Lagrangian angle. So if I take the holomorphic volume form and I restrict it to any Lagrangian, then it's a unit multiple of the regular volume form on the Lagrange. It's e to the i theta, in fact, times the volume form on the Lagrange. But this is the Lagrange thing. Okay? So that's another way to define what the Lagrangian angle is. Okay? So this Lagrangian angle, if you, if you want to think about it, it's sort of telling you how you're moving in the Lagrangian Grassmannian. How the, how the tangent space is moving inside of the Grangian Grassmannian. And then that d theta is like a winding number, right? We're asking for that winding number to vanish from this little zero Maslow. So that's what the Maslow class is sort of interpreted as, is like a winding number. Okay, so this is the, this is the Lagrangian angle. And so what we can do is we, if we're given any Lagrangian at all, we can look at the integral. So if we have an almost calibrated Lagrangian, then we can define a number, which is the argument of the integral of um, this holomorphic volume form. That's something that makes sense. And if the angle were constant, this would just give you the Lagrangian angle, right? If the angle were constant, this would just spit that out. Okay? So the statement is to be, to be um, stable, is to say, if I look at the sort of topological or average Lagrangian angle of L1 and the average Lagrangian angle of L2, and look at the interval of numbers that you get, then it is not contained in the variation of the Lagrangian angle. The original L. What's that saying? You can't break it up into pieces where that the angle kind of goes down, right? sort of informally. Right? That's what it's saying. That's just like this slope stability type statement. It's not exactly the same, but it's in that same spirit. And the other thing you can do is much more like more Riemannian looking. If I look at the volume of L, then it's always got to be. Um, less than or equal to the modulus of the integral of omega over the first one and over the second. So in particular, this thing is always less than to the volume of L1 and the volume of L2. So it's saying it's all, the volume of the L is always smaller than the volume of each of the separate pieces. So again, you can't break it up into smaller bits. Okay, this is, this is the state. This is how you should think about it. And what we can also prove, the same, through protagonists. So the theorem is that so if the singularity, if I look at this, if the, if, LT, so if you remember the thing that I erased, LT was the thing at the singular time, right? If I look at this LT and remove the singular point, okay, so what, what's going on? Let's draw a picture. That same picture that I had before, right? I drew it like this. So there was a singularity here, but it could have been that this was connected, right? Could have been like that. But what I want is that the difference is if I remove the point xt, this one would be disconnected. And if I removed it in that case, it would still be connected. So if this is disconnected, then L0 cannot be stable. So it's unstable. Thomas Yao sense.
So in other words, if you have, so we, we show that both of these conditions are violated. We show that neither one can hold. And so what we've proved is that if you had a stable, special Lagrange, a stable Lagrangian in the sense of Thomas Yao, you could not form a neck pinch singularity where it breaks up into two pieces. That's not quite the same as saying it doesn't form a neck pinch singularity because this could happen, right? This could still happen. There could be a neck pinch singularity here, but the thing is still connected. And then that's got nothing to do with Thomas Yao's stability. And in fact, that's the expectation is that Thomas Yao's stability only will see some of the singularities of the Lagrangian mean curvature flow, not all of them. So the sort of the naive conjecture is probably not quite true, but in spirit it is. It's, so, it's somehow saying somehow the meaningful singularities will be encoded by, you would hope would be encoded by the stability condition, but not all of them. Questions? Oh no, we can continue the flow in all the cases. In all the cases, we can always continue, but I just drew that picture. It's, it's just, we can always continue it in, in any case, in any of the cases. We can oh, just because if you're, if it's, it's just saying that in that case, then you know it can be written as a Lagrangian connect sum of two distinct Lagrangians. Otherwise it's a Lagrangian self connect sum. And then you can't say, you can't relate it to Thomas Yao's stability. That's all. You don't get the same. You don't get that these conditions are violated. You can still write something down. It's still a connect sum, but now it's just a self connect sum. And you can't say anything. Yeah. No, it's a good. It's a good question. I mean, we've never seen this one, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. These are the ones we've seen. Right? These are the ones we've seen. But that doesn't mean the other one doesn't happen. Okay. So um, yes, I think uh, that's that's all that I really wanted to to say today. I'm willing to say anything more about details of the proof, but perhaps I will finish there and, and stop the questions. Thank you very much.